so I want to just share, I guess I'll share the screen. I just wanted to show some of the, um, <clears throat> the kind of projects that we were thinking about uh, that might, let's see, that might um, be ways it would start, but like the initial projects, things that would, could be profitable to build today. And these are really sample projects just to show you know, with Kyle's imagination, really the kind of projects that people could come up with, but really who knows what people will come up with. That's the whole idea is to unleash that innovative creativity. Yeah, but so one of the kind of projects um, I think that could make a lot of sense would be uh, sort of like an automated people mover system, um, but high speed. Uh, I guess you could think about it uh, sort of like uh, an elevator, but a horizontal elevator. Um, it would be over, uh, you know, relatively short distances. Um, but the, uh, so here's kind of an example of one. So connecting Penn Station and Grand Central. Um, if you had a, you could build a high speed, like a people mover type thing, underground between the two uh, stations. And it could be 60 seconds. It would take you 60 seconds to get from, from Penn Station to Grand Central or vice versa. Show, show some of our projects, maybe one sure. or two more. Yeah, yeah. Um, so another one uh, that I, I like a lot is um, just to get to LaGuardia Airport. Um, so the, this would be another sh like a shuttle, a high speed people mover um, between, it's connecting LaGuardia to um, Jackson Heights, the subway station there where you've got like the E, the F and the, and the seven train. Um, and that would be less than two minutes. You could get to from LaGuardia to that station, to that subway station in less than two minutes. And that would be, and now even assuming that this has uh, a, a $20 fare, which is what they were originally for these proposing for the, um, the LaGuardia air train, that's to the higher end. But still, even with that, this would be faster and cheaper than a cab. Um, except maybe in the middle of the night, but again, you could, and it would pay for itself, right? So, I mean, this would be, this would be more expensive almost $2 billion. But again, I think you'd have plenty of people willing to pay given that it's faster and cheaper than a cab. Um, and also it's a little bit cheaper than what they're proposing to build now. And it would be much faster than what they're, um, what the, now I think they've, in the last couple of months, they pulled back on on the the re the revisiting the plans because a lot of people weren't happy with the LaGuardia air train. But at least what was being studied and proposed, this would be this would take so twenty six minutes to Midtown, and versus forty three minutes on the proposed air train. So I mean, it would be, and then I'll just you know the other two. Let's see, one would just be building a tunnel to connect the east and west east and west sides of Manhattan. I mean, that could pay for itself, definitely, um, and save a lot of time. Um, That's what I'll just have to say, even downtown, you probably could do this. I live downtown in Broom Street, you know, where you have the Holland Tunnel connecting to the Manhattan Bridge. Right. You know, backed up 40 minute delays, go underground. I mean, go underground. And if, if some developer would come along and actually build it without costing a nickel of taxpayer mm -hmm. money, let them do it. Right. That's the basic idea. Right. Why not? Why, why not? Why not let them try? I think you could, you could um, build a lot of new connecting a lot more housing and office development into the city. You could buy, there are a lot of nice sites, especially like I think along the waterfront, but anywhere that you have a, a great site or a large development site, that's not super convenient to transit, but it's pretty cool, but it's kind of close. Um, you could build something like this to connect it and it's, so this development essentially would, it would almost be as though it were located at Grand Central again, 45 seconds. Um, now, supposedly the average elevator ride in New York City is 118 seconds. Um, now I've been, that seems a little bit high, but I've been, but if you count the waiting time, that seems about right. So this would be, this would be fast. Now you still have to get, take an elevator once you got to the building, but this would be faster than an elevator, like half the time of an, of an elevator trip to get from say Grand Central Terminal to this uh, you know, new development here, um, which could be housing, it could be offices or whatever, but there would be 
So that another way to pay for these would be the, and that would, you know, add a huge amount of value to the real estate. So that would be another way to pay for these or the kind of tunnels that you might get in the beginning. Yeah, I think one of the things that actually with this proposal that Kyle pointed out, you could charge more rents off, right. you know, for this office space. Let's say you charge ten dollars, you know, per square foot more, twenty dollars per fifteen dollars yeah, per square foot is. more, and a real estate developer might just be willing to pay for that, yep. just because his building is more valuable. With a Substead Act, he actually has a legal mechanism to easily mm -hmm. do that. You know, if there's no Substead Act, everything is a one-off legislative effort with the government and that's mm -hmm. that's what's stopping this kind of development today right and often they have a, like a non-compete type thing if they were going to build you know like if they were going to build a tunnel for grand central to penn station and get a franchise or something it would be temporary but it would also probably you know often have a non-compete clause so no one else could build something maybe we want to discuss a little bit just like the benefits if really we had a more extensive and faster transportation network how it would benefit people's lives, uh, like you know, access to cheaper housing. Like if you live in Queens today and you have an hour-long commute, you know, on a, on a whole series of you know, you know, and it becomes a half-hour commute, your life has been improved, and you can actually, you know, get cheaper housing and 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 have faster commutes into the city, which expands your world, your work opportunities. Um, you know, one of the things we point out in the report is mm -hmm. it even expands your romantic opportunities mm -hmm. if you're able to yeah. actually cheaply access a wider domain mm -hmm. because there's a better transportation infrastructure. I've been asking people too about that. And uh, I think sometime there's a Seinfeld episode where George, just he's saying how he won't, it, maybe Rain told him that, I don't know, that he won't date someone in a, in a different borough. And I know people, have, you know, because I've been yeah. asking, they've said, had that experience, you know, like how, how, if it took you half as long to get anywhere in the city, like you could include a lot more zip codes when you're, you know, on your app, when you're dating app or whatever, like you could, you know, it's, and for, and even if it's only a little bit faster, like for some people, like if they're thinking about, if they want to go to Rutgers or, but it's too far away, you know, you can go to a little bit better school. I mean, there's so many ways that. Um, yeah. You can imagine a couple where each works in a different location, kind of far yeah. apart and actually, you know, you, you don't have to move mm -hmm. because you, you, know, you can get to your yeah. destinations more quickly. So the best argument for subsetting is love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.